welcome to another episode of Project Geospatial. I'm Adam Simmons here at the GeoInt 2021 uh, Convention uh, Symposium here in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, here with me is Keith Barber with Tanzel. Keith, hi, Adam. Hi, how's it going? It's, it's going great. Awesome. I, lo I love this symposium every year. It's, it's one of the cornerstones, I think, not just for uh, geo geeks like us, but also for the IC and the government writ large. So you and I know each other, but for those of you who don't know you, What's your, your history in the community and uh, before you get into the company? So um, I go back a little bit of a ways. I enlisted in the Navy in 1983 and I was an imagery interpreter um, specialty for a long time, an all source analyst as well. Uh, as I was in the Navy, I got fortunate on assignments. Uh, when I was a chief petty officer, I got to work on Tomahawk mission planning systems, which got me more into the design aspects and, and the modeling and simulation pieces of not just weapon systems, but of the assets that help drive those weapon systems. Um, when I was done doing that, I had a, a couple different various resourcing, budgeting, requirements, planning, programming jobs, where as program manager, resource manager, a budget guy had to go to the Hill, had to go actually execute programs, um, worked on the Navy staff until about 1999, 2000, then went to NGA. I made senior executive there. Was fortunate to do a couple great uh, programs there that I, I can't really talk about. One was a study and one was deploying uh, capabilities to, to the warfighters, which was is always rewarding. And then in 2013, 14, I left, went to industry, a couple jobs, um, consulting in the Pentagon, consulting for a couple different companies. Um, and I ended up here at Tanzel almost two years ago. Two and a half, two years ago. And I, and I, love, I love this company what we're trying to do. You've been to many of GONs here with Tanzel. What are you here to present? Who is Tanzel first of all? So Tanzel, we're, we're, we're focused on front ends, visualization, AR, VR, 3D mono environments in the web. Um, but what you start to discover as you go build those elements is how difficult it is to move data into those front ends, how hard it is to sample it, to be useful. Um, if I just want to show you something really cool like industrial light or magic and show you a VR, AR, I can do that. But to get real content into these engines and then make it something that is exploitable or traceable or usable that I can then track back and forth, that's a little bit of a trick. And so we, we are as focused on our infrastructure. So think of that as the software that it takes to organize, index, encrypt, uh, sample, and move uh, through a microservice technology perspective. Um, and how to build that out to get to these you know, can you, uh, can, able to. Can you talk about some of the use cases that exemplify exactly what you just said? Yeah, one of the use cases that we actually have here in the booth is a is a pilot demo that we were putting together, um, working with some folks in the Seismic Commission in California. So, so if you thought about this, you have at least three different kinds of people, structural engineers, fire and emergency response folks, and seismologists that look at, at indications, warnings, and uh, exploit seismic sensors for earthquakes. And we put all of those data layers into the same platform so that we could start to see what the interaction was to, to those platforms um, and to, to the users of those platforms. So one example, we, we, did a, we had a one-hour presentation with, we had a chief for um, Cal OES for the emergency responders. We had a seismologist and we had a structural engineer who, who is actually in Haiti right now uh, and was like re reaching around saying, Hey, you know, we thought we were going to get these levels of support. We're just not getting it because, you know, sometimes government process, you know, isn't as fast or agile as it needs to be. I, I actually remember that from my days. It's difficult. It's it's a hard problem. Um, but inside of that, we actually saw them, them shift their own concept of operations using something that, that we built as a pilot, not even to field or use, just because it gave them visual cues and indications of data that they otherwise didn't have. So when you can actually see seismic sensors in a building project a certain way, you can start to see where the damage in the building is. You could start to manage how you're gonna red tag, yellow tag, green tag buildings. It's come to find out in the early days of a, of a response, whether it's a hurricane or an earthquake, a lot of buildings get tagged as not livable that shouldn't be tagged lot not livable and other things that should be red tagged but not get as, as not livable don't get tagged. So 
it's giving clarity of, of that fog in those moments to be able to make better decisions faster because everybody's life uh, depends on it. And also in that meeting were some guys that deal with reinsurance. So in you know, inside of climate change and these ever growing um, environmental issues, insurance companies are finding it harder and harder to assess risk because it's all about predictions. Right, actuary tables are based on statistical representations of events over time, and so as those things rapidly change and evolve, it's hard to keep up with that. So having a platform like this, where you can start to to manage and look not just in the now, but we could run algorithms in there um, to start looking at different kinds of predictions, is important. Excellent. So the uh, the platform that you have here, you mentioned a lot of different use cases, right. but but at the same time, how much of this, uh, how many you also mentioned things like insurance as well. Uh, how long has Tanzel been around and how involved are you on the commercial side compared to government? Well, so I'm, I'm probably a little bit more of a government guy than commercial side, but I'm involved with both. Yeah. Um, I'm actually running development teams right now um, as operating officer on use cases and how to project. I would tell you that there's probably five different markets that we're evaluating to large scale construction and oil and gas, but even some medical service applications and capabilities. Um, the, the data and the services are more of how you manage content and see content. Um, we are focused um, on like three different markets right now. Uh, company's been around for about seven years, um, but in that seven years has been very, very small and focused on trying to make sure that there's an A, the software holds, the technologies hold, the market segments are there, and now we're in a growth period. So we're, we're just now starting to get a little bit bigger here in the last six months or so. So the visualization, is this a, is this a platform that people log into to look at the visualization, or is this <laughs> a service that people can integrate within their own visualization uh, yeah. applications of choice? So one of the things that we made sure up front is that I hope I can move. <laughs> One of the things we made sure up front was that you weren't going to be tied to any particular hardware suite or environment. So what you'll even see is we have 3D um, in a web, mono. We have stereo in our spaces back in California. We have the Mac pads over here where we do AR and VR on a iMac that we pushed our software uh, service capability to uh, and data into. So we're, we're agnostic to the device and we're agnostic to the environments. I would tell you that the more you get to rendering uh, and how the rendering engines operate and some of the use of the microservices, because every everything is kind of tailored everywhere. People may not want to admit it, but within a microservice architecture, the idea is I I have a method and a template and I can re and I can come to you and use this and you know use this plugin inside this environment for for your data. We don't care about the data format or the type. Um, we can run through transcoding any kind of data sets. Uh, and we're agnostic to the hardware platforms. Are you For some of this, we'll the, uh, need like GPUs or certain processing. Are you agnostic to the types of sensors and imagery or, or yeah, data are. do you have as well? Yep, I don't care. Awesome. I see many different examples up here. You mentioned augmented mm -hmm. reality. Uh, looks like you have visualization. I mean, it's... Uh, yeah, we, we, it, we, we, we have a demo three. that we would run through, people through sometimes. Yeah. We don't have it completely set up here. Um, but we will take you from space and how you could do space situational awareness, but then actually grab a satellite. And we have one of the satellites on the data, on the panel. You, you'll see them in here and project the satellite. So now from an engineering perspective, I can see an error. I can get an alert on a screen that shows where the vehicle is in space and time. And I can start um, exploiting the error on the device with engineers potentially in a collaborative environment. Because, you know, like like this this demo, one of the big pieces is there's multiple people in that environment now. So it's multiple user environment, and you don't all have to be like an imagery analyst to be in there. So some of this is built for, you know, depending on the data types. Hey, I'm a seismologist and I need this foundational picture of the world, but I want to pull my seismic data into here and see what the impacts. And I'm an engineer and I can put my buildings in there. Or I'm a satellite manufacturer and I want to be able to track my satellite at a certain level all the time in space. So it's been two years since the, the last physical geo yeah. symposium. Yeah. Uh, you're here in St. Louis. I've been to about 12 of these. You've, yeah. you've been quite a few. My, yeah, it's it's uh, glad to be back. At the same time, what is what do you hope to get out of this symposium? And uh, it's the first time in St. Yeah. Louis as well. It is the first time in St. Louis. So it's nice to get more NGA folks. 
uh, it was nice when it was in DC because that kind of happened. Um, I, I'll tell you, I, I talked to the leadership in, at USGIF on a couple panels in all working groups uh, throughout the year. And, and you know, Tanzel is a big supporter of the foundation. We supported some of the scholarship funds this year. It was a tough year for everybody, and it was a tough year for USGIF. And, and my simplest articulation of what success looked like was that we would be here. And more than 500 people would show up, and we would all at least hoist a beer, and we would share what we've been doing for the last year, year and a half, and get the juices on collaboration and innovation going again. Uh, to me, it's the most important part of the symposium. It's the most important part of how we interact as people and human beings. And, and I thought that was the most important thing. April, that'll be different. When we're back in Denver, that'll, that'll be a little bit different. But right now it was, you know, we got enough people here. It's a real show. It's not the biggest show. It's not the smallest show. And no, so I it, it's nice to have that success criteria. Awesome. Any last minute message you'd like to give the audience uh, you know, about Tanzel? About Tanzel, we're Party out parties. there, we're growing, uh, you know, we're here and we'll be seen and people will discover more about us. Um, about the foundation, I would just ask everybody, whether you're a big company or a small company, sponsorship in the foundation is as important to you to get your message out as a company, but it's also, you know, don't forget that it's an educational foundation. So when the requests for uh, donations for scholarship funds, whether they're small or not, or sponsorship opportunities, whether they're small or not, reach out, help the foundation because it helps education, which you know, we have an aging workforce and we need to get young blood in, into, into our workforce, whether they're engineers or developers or GIS uh, specialists themselves. Um, this, is, this is one of the most important ways to do that. How do they get a hold of Tanzel if they're interested in what they see here? Uh, Tanzel.com, we got a website, we've got cards, um, any, any of those. Uh, and we're at booth number? 914. 914, so uh, GUN Symposium, if you're here for the next couple days and see this tonight, you can check them out, booth 914. Thanks, Keith, for joining us. Thanks. Uh, this Good is Tanzel, everybody. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you.